Well, hello, my little angels. Come on in. Welcome to my soon to be demolished kitchen. Um, but we're going to do it now. We're going to do a cook with me. And we're going to start with dessert. We're making the rum cake. Now this rum cake came from Sunshine on My Shoulder ASMR. She wrote a book and I love it. And the rum cake is her recipe and she's been making it for over 16 years. Now, little disclaimer, if for any reason this cake does not turn out, this is no reflection on her recipe. This is a reflection on I'm adjusting it to a gluten-free recipe, okay? Um, I'm going to put in the description later all her actual recipe, with her permission, of course, and then I'll, I'll, you can follow along on the video for the alterations that I needed to do for the actual gluten-free version. Um, and you may think that gluten-free baking just means using a one-to-one -one flour. Not so much. There's two, two tips that will help you immensely, and it took me forever to figure these out. Um, the first, you need extra moisture, okay? So even if it's a one-to-one -one flour, I add an extra egg yolk, or I add a little extra oil, or I'll sometimes do both, okay? Um, in this case, I might add a little extra rum, but, because, <laughs> you know, it's good that way. <laughs> and also, your batters need to sit for at least 15 minutes before you bake. It needs to absorb more so than a regular baking recipe. Those are the two tips that once I figured those out, my baking started coming together. I still get flops, guys. Um, and just in case when I pan, you see these two disgusting bananas, I'm making strawberry banana muffins later. Um, and I'm using freeze-dried strawberries that I found at the dollar store, guys. I bought freeze-dried cranberries off Amazon for a ridiculous amount, but it was for a special occasion. At the dollar store, they had packets for a dollar. I'm like, okay, so I grabbed two packets. I'm gonna pulverize them into a powder um, because then they don't affect your ratio and I'm gonna just throw them in with my regular banana recipe, banana muffin recipe, and yeah, strawberry banana muffins. We'll see how they turn out, but that's later. I digress. Also, I just wanted to um, mention a new channel I sub to that I'm enjoying, um, ASMR October. I found out about her, I'll be honest, because she mentioned my channel. I started watching and I love her voice. So give her a check out, please. She's, I like her, okay? So this recipe first starts with a cup of chopped walnuts. Now, the first thing, Mr. Okay, first thing we have to do is the basics. So I have preheated my oven to 350. That's that clicking sound you hear. I have my bunt pan here. Sorry guys, I have my bunt pan here. But if you guys don't have a bunt pan, what you do is you use a regular cake pan, right? Get a can that you've completely, run it through the dishwasher. I can't have a label or anything. Put the can in the middle and then you've got a bundt pan. Usually it works. So I'm gonna go spray this, actually no, because spraying is a good sound. Now, Lindy's recipe does say to grease and flour. I love using my canola spray, so I'm just gonna use that, okay? And because it's a bundt, I'm gonna spray the hell out of it. Okay, that's good. Woo. I really want to find that one. Um, I'm having a hard time finding. Well, I can't find it. I got to find a gluten-free version where the flour is actually in the oil too. But, you know, we do what we can. Now, I need a cup of chopped pecans or walnuts. We're using pecans because I love pecans. Okay. And I should have, and you just put them on the bottom. So there's my cup of pecans on the bottom. Save those for later. If you guys ever want, if you're toasting pecans, which are, toast them in a frying pan, just a dry pan. You don't have to put butter or anything in it. Just toast them lightly. When they're just about finished, put a splash of maple syrup in the pan. It'll bubble like crazy. And when you kind of see it all gone, turn them out onto like a parchment or a wax paper. You have the best candied pecans 
so good they're so so good and i love putting them in salads with goat cheese you get that tang from the goat cheese you get, or feta and you get that sweet oh it's so good it's so good okay let's begin shall we so the first ingredient after that is a box of yellow cake mix the one with pudding in the mix okay so i'm going to be using this betty crocker gluten-free golden cake mix i don't have the one with the pudding in the mix so I bought the Dr. Oetker Vanilla Mousse, which I use for pudding. That's my oven telling me it's at 350. So this one, I'm just gonna add to the cake mix. Okay, that way I now have, don't be afraid, you know. I'm a little afraid because I want um, Lindy to be proud of me. <laughs> but guys, so I'm going to put this in my like that. Put the cake mix in. Okay. And a real chef will tell you, sift, sift everything. I don't sift, okay? I don't sift. Where's my garbage going? We're going to do that. Okay, and next, we're going to do the pudding mix. And because I'm using a pudding mix that's not already in this, I will be adding one extra egg yolk too. Okay. Just so you know. Okay, so we've done that. Three eggs. All right. Now, I was sure. There it is. Sorry, guys. I knew I took out a fourth egg. Now, I personally do my eggs separate. I don't, I like to beat them up separately. Okay rather than beat them into the mix. That's just a personal thing, but it's my cooking show. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna put the three eggs and one egg yolk, okay? All right. So I'm gonna save the egg white and do a facial later. Way, you don't get shells well if you do get shells you can use another shell to pull it out you know that right you don't know just take a half of your egg shell and yeah I know I saw it too and you just scoop and the shell will attach to it so that's an easy way to get shells out okay. now what I'm going to do and I'm not getting out my mixer or anything guys because I want to show you you know you can do things by hand all right and I hope you'll join me for part two of this video. I'm going to do two versions. One is the dessert and one will be the dinner. I might try to put them together, but we'll see. Okay, you know I'm techno not. So we're going to add that to the mix. Sorry about the noise. One half cup of cold water, which I have right over here. I ran it earlier. You can also, for me, sometimes I substitute milk because um, we have lactose-free milk. Now I need a third of a cup of vegetable oil. There's my third of a cup. I'm using a canola oil. So. And I'm gonna pour it in. And if a little runs out, actually, I'm gonna finish this off. It's only probably another teaspoon or so, but what did I say about extra liquid? exactly so plus that finish that off i like doing that all right and then one half cup of dark rum okay so the only dark rum i have is dead man's fingers spiced rum so i'm going to give it a smell because i haven't actually oh it's one of these quirky things okay there we go Oh, that smells good. Okay, we're gonna use this, okay? Where did I put my half a cup? There it is, okay. So a half a cup of dark rum, but if I couldn't have used this, I did bring my white rum. I have white rum. And then for the glaze, I thought I'd be, because it calls for dark rum as well, but I have this pineapple rum I wanna get rid of. 
So I think I'm gonna add some of that to the glaze. Okay, oh yeah, this is a nice dark rum, okay. Maybe we'll just stick with dark rum for the glaze. Okay, so a half a cup and then one for the chef. <laughs> okay. Whew. Okay, and that's it. So we're gonna mix it together while I talk to you. This is the mix. Now, you guys know if you ever want to substitute liquids, I know cooking, baking is a science, but if it calls for water, you can substitute milk. You can use yogurt. You can use sour cream. You know, you learn as you go what a batter should look like. For me, with the gluten-free baking, I have really had to figure it out, you know? Now this is going to bake for one hour and then we're going to cool it, invert it, prick the top with a knife or fork and then we're going to pour the glaze over in stages until it's all absorbed. This is going to be so moist and the glaze I'll make later guys um, and that's just a quarter pound of butter. It looks like a quarter cup of water, one cup of sugar and a half a cup of dark rum. Sounds good to me. And then you just boil it. And I think you boil it for a minute. Uh, let's see. Oh, you boil it for five minutes, stirring constantly. Oh, and you add the rum last. You don't add the rum while it's cooking. You add it while it's cooling. So you get a full rum taste. Now, if you're worried and you're making this for children, Okay, the rum is gonna cook out and the rum in the glaze will evaporate into the air. If you're at all worried, take the amount of rum you need, add a little extra, boil it. Once it's boiled, the alcohol is boiled out, okay? And then use the measurements as required, okay? And then you don't have to worry. And you can do that with any alcohol, all right? So I think that looks like a pretty good batter. So. Excuse me disappearing for a moment, but I'm not wasting any of this batter, so I needed to get a rubber spatula. Rubber spatulas and wooden spoons are your best friends. So I love this pan because it has the pour spout. So when you're doing a bundt cake, you wanna go in a circle around the bundt just to help it be even, you know? That's it, and it all comes out. And then you're gonna use your rubber spatula to get it all out and to mix up any powder that didn't get mixed. Which happens to everybody, okay? I don't care who you are. I'm sure Ina Garner has to do that too sometimes. Not that I'm comparing myself to the Barefoot Contessa. I'm not. Okay, so we've got this all in. Okay. And see? That batter got cleaned right out because of this. Now, this is gonna be a little loud, so I'm gonna come over here to do it, okay? You wanna bang it. That just gets your air bubbles out, and because this isn't gonna to rise too, too much, I'm not gonna put a cookie sheet under it. I'll probably regret it. But um, otherwise, put a cookie sheet under it to catch if you're worried about dripping, okay? So I'm just gonna pop this in the oven, it is 12.21, according to this, this clock. Okay. So, that's that. So what I'm gonna do now is clean up a bit. Actually, I gotta cork that. I'm gonna show you a couple cooking utensils that I can't do without. If any of you, you all know how much I love my cooking YouTube channel. Um, I have two incredible favorites, which is Rachel Cooks with Love. You guys know that one. I've told you about it. And she is unintentional ASMR. And the other one is Mama Sue's Kitchen, I believe it. Mama Sue's Kitchen. I love her so much. And she has great tips. But she had these measuring spoons. And they're from Amazon. 
and I don't think they were overly pricey. What I love about these measuring spoons, and any of you that cook or bake will understand, because they're rectangular, they fit into any spice jar. So if you need a tablespoon of a spice, you just put this in and scoop it out. Whereas my rounded ones don't fit. So I have to kind of pour them and you end up losing spices and making a mess and everything. So I have to be honest, if I was to recommend a product besides a rubber spatula and wooden spoons, because you can't make tomato sauce without wooden spoons. Well, you can, but I would never. I like to use these, okay, so that. And some measuring cups, that's all you need, okay? I'll show you another measuring cup I have, and I think I got these from Pampered Chef, but I'm not sure. And it's a whole set, I've actually lost one of them. Um, we ended up using it for something, and I said, throw it out, oh, for candy, when she got skunked with the hot water, I'm like, I don't want it back. What I love about this, it's wet dry. You can put your wet ingredients or your liquid and look in. The measurements are there. So as you're pouring them, you can see the lines. Okay, it's none of this, look it up, look at the, for the meniscus and all that, right? You can, look at me, I used a high school science term. Um, that's another thing I really like is these kind of measuring. Now, we are going to, I don't wanna make the glaze too early because it still has to cool and everything. So I will do another video with the glaze and then I'll put these two videos together and get that on there. And then I'm going to now let you go. Bye, bye. And I'm going to set up for our meatballs and tomato sauce that I'm so excited to make. Um, I hope you guys will enjoy this recipe. So I will say my goodbyes in the glaze part of the video, but for now, I'll see you very soon. Hi guys, I'm back and we're going to make the glaze for our rum cake. So this is a quarter cup of butter. So I'm just gonna put that in my pot and I'm gonna show you my pot in a minute because it's another thing I love. And it was at Christmas time, the, I think it's called the ordinary, no, the everyday pot or pan. Anyway, it's the one Selena Gomez advertises too but they had an amazing deal. So I bought the frying pan. I cannot tell you how much I love this product. Okay, we're into April. I've been using it religiously since the day after Boxing Day. And I love the thing, okay? I can bake in it, I can cook in it, I can saute in it, it doesn't stick. Anyways, they had a big sale on the pot. And this is the mini pot. They had a sale on the mini pot and the mini pan. And it was practically getting one for free. Um, and I burned my last little frying pan. I don't want to talk about it. It was water. I don't even want to talk about it, okay? It was just a mess. It was old. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> so, um, another great deal. So we ordered those and I am so happy with them. I really am. If, if you buy the pots and pans you can afford, okay? This whole business of, you know, a 500 to a thousand dollar set of pots just okay it just kills me um i recommend nonstick. i do okay otherwise you're using oils and and um butters and lards to to make everything not stick so i do recommend if you're starting out get a non a good non-stick set that's inexpensive you know don't go for the logostino the padernos um i'm trying to think of another big high-end brand it's probably brands I can't afford to buy, but here in Canada, we have the Master Chef at Canadian Tire. I like their products, I really do. So, there. All right, so we have the quarter pound of butter. Wait a minute. I am so glad that I read that because I did a quarter cup of butter. This is why, okay, so let's see. A pound of butter is two cups, half a cup. Half a pound is one cup. So a quarter pound is half a cup. We need another half cup of butter, another quarter cup, I mean. So, so glad I did that. There, so now I have another quarter cup. Otherwise that would have been, it could have been a mistake. Well, I might have noticed, but 
Anyways, but see, that's another thing with gluten-free cooking. Try to find recipes that have the weight and get yourself a kitchen weight. They're not expensive. A kitchen scale. I got mine at Amazon for like, I think $12. And you just zero it with the dish on it that you're going to measure in. Make sure it's at zero and then you weigh your ingredients. And with gluten-free cooking, that really helps because if you have too much flour, you're going to get a gritty taste. So try to find a recipe that has um, weights. Okay, now we need a quarter cup of water. So we're gonna get a quarter cup of water. Mm -hmm. There we go. And we need one full cup of sugar. Okay, so just, these are thirds, so that's one, two, and well, it's just enough without opening the bag, okay three cups of sugar and then it's also a half a cup of dark rum but we put that in at the end so come with me my friends i'm bringing you with me over to the stove okay so we're over here at the stove and i'm going to put you sorry about this on top of my spice jars <laughs> there we go that's better so i'm going to turn that to about medium okay I have an electric stove, so it goes high, eight, six, four, two, low, okay? A medium heat to me is about four to five. High heat is seven and above to me, probably eight and above. Low is two and lower, okay? Now, I do not like this stove. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, it's a Samsung. It is my personal opinion and does not reflect anyone else. I would never buy a Samsung appliance again in my life, okay? We are replacing all of them with this new kitchen. So um, we went with Whirlpool. And one of the reasons I wanted a Whirlpool so bad is the thingy-jiggies, what do you call it? The controls are here in the front. Ladies or men, I cannot tell you how many times these poor girls have suffered burns because I have reached over and burned myself on a hot burner. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so my wooden, these are spurtles. Another product I absolutely love. My mother-in-law gave it to me the last Christmas. So two years ago, two and a half years ago. And I'm still using them. I love my spurtles. I actually love wooden spoons, um, wooden cooking utensils. So we're just going to get this to melt. Okay, and here's, here's what it looks like as it's melting. Okay. And when it's melted, we're going to take it off the heat and we're going to add our rum. Now, don't panic. I mentioned this when we were doing the cake. If you're serving this to kids, you don't have to worry, guys. The heat from the glaze will burn away any of the alcohol. And just sitting out will burn away the alcohol. Um, the rum in the cake burnt off in the cooking process. But if you don't believe me or you're just being overly cautious, and I have no problems with that, Take the amount of alcohol in a recipe that you need, measure it out into a pot, add a little bit more, maybe two tablespoons more, and boil it, okay? As soon as it comes to a, bo a boil, you can turn off the heat and pour it into a jar you can seal, okay? And the alcohol has burned off and it's perfectly safe, okay? There's no alcohol left in it. That's what I was taught by my mom and that's what I taught my daughter and I cooked with alcohol a lot, and I promise you, she never got drunk, okay? Um, I do remember making um, Guinness stew, and we had friends over, and they had wee kids, and they're like, well, what are you serving the children? And I'm like, the stew? There's alcohol. It's Guinness, and it's been cooking for three hours. So they ended up having Chef Boyardee that night the kids which was fine I'm not gonna everybody has their own views okay so this you need to come to a boil and you're gonna boil it for five minutes okay so it's not at a boil yet but it has melted which is a good thing so we're just gonna leave that for now and I'll just talk to you guys for five minutes hi guys <laughs> 
No, I'm really, I'm happy to be doing this. I love to cook and bake. And not everyone does, and I get that. So I'm trying to um, let you know what you can do if you don't like cooking or you're just starting out. Cooking can be friggin' intimidating, guys. When I first started out, I didn't know what the hell I was doing and I was nervous, okay? Um, we had a very small kitchen growing up. My mom taught us the basics, but she didn't want people in her kitchen. It's a small kitchen. She didn't want us cooking and making messes. So I really didn't start cooking till I was on my own and with my husband too. So, you know, we've kind of learned together and that's great. He loves to come in the kitchen. We both love cooking together. He makes the most amazing barbecue sauce. He has taught me to make the most, oh, I never, I have, I have not bought a store brand barbecue sauce in years. Year. Okay, we have a boil. Okay, here, I'm gonna show you this. I'm just gonna hold my camera. Okay, see, we have the boil. So we're gonna boil that for five minutes, um, just so you guys see what's happening. Cooking shouldn't be scary. Cooking is a lot more creative than baking to me. Baking is more decorative creative, but it's a science. But once you get the science down, you can do your own thing. You know that if you add a little bit of um, fruit, a wet fruit, you're gonna have to add a wee bit more of a dry ingredient. If, um, what else? But with cooking, once you get the, do a recipe the first time, the way it's meant to be. But after that, make it your own. I call it chemifying. In my house, we call it chemifying, because I'm Kim. And I'll say, oh, I made baked beans, but I chemified it. The other day I made baked beans um, for Easter. I found out it's my uncle's favorite thing. So I just bought, actually I sent Baby Angel to the store in the car um, to get baked beans. They didn't have navy beans at um, the drugstore, but they did have cans of just Heinz baked beans. So I made up a sauce myself with ketchup, molasses, maple syrup, ketchup, apple cider vinegar, a fair bit of apple cider vinegar, I will say that. Um, I didn't need salt. I put some pepper in, garlic. I fried up some bacon and put the bacon aside. Some people call it fat. I say they're bacon drippings, and I just added a tablespoon of that in the sauce. And once you have your sauce mixed, then you put the beans in. Now I did drain it, so I didn't use their sauce, I used my sauce. I put them in a baking dish. I put some, I mixed the bacon in with it once it was crispy, popped it in the oven, let it cook on 350 for about 45 minutes. It was done and it was, be I covered it and they were delicious. People went back for seconds and thirds, so I was so happy. I just remembered that Lindy's recipe said to stir constantly. <laughs> Again, I preface this, if this doesn't turn out, this is not the recipe author's fault, it's mine, um, because I had to adjust a lot of this for gluten-free, um, and because I'm a chatter, so. We only have two more minutes, guys, and then we can I'm definitely gonna make this into two videos. So it's gonna be cook with me dessert and cook with me dinner. Um, but I can really feel it thickening up. And I wanna show you again. I'm just gonna hold it because I don't want my phone going in there. But you see how the, it's foaming? That's thickening too, which is really good. And there we go. Because what you're doing basically is evaporating any of the liquid in the butter and melting the sugars and the water that's in there too so that it forms a thicker syrupy glaze and that's what you want see here let me turn this a bit guys i hope nobody's getting seasick from this but... okay. see how thick that's going let me see. Okay. and when we add the rum we're then going to glaze our cakes. Okay, we just have, as soon as that says 12.39, we're good to go. And then I'll move us back over there. Okay. And I am doing this on solar eclipse day, so I want you guys safe, okay? You wear certified glasses, 
try to keep your pets inside if possible. That's the best thing you can do. Okay. And I personally just watch it on TV. But my friend lives in Niagara Falls and she says it's just crazy there. Just crazy with people. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to bring the pan. And you guys with me. Hello. We're going to put the pan in the sink right now. And I'm going to get my rum. And we need a half a cup of dark rum. And we're using um, Dead Man's Fingers Spiced Rum. Because it smells delicious. And I'm not a rum fan. Oh. Okay, I don't have quite a half a cup. So, whoa, hear that? Do you hear that guys? That is, I'm just gonna finish off this pineapple rum. That is the alcohol coming out of it, okay? So you do not have to worry. Now, I'm just gonna let this sit in the pot and cool down. going to absorb into the cooled cake okay and that's it that's you know now I will be adding to this <laughs> again I'll be splicing together three so when the cake comes out I'm going to show you how to do the holes I'm going to then pour the glaze part of the glaze over because you have to use up the glaze till it's all gone and that'll be it so I'll see you guys in just a couple minutes for your time, um, for a couple seconds actually. For me, it'll be about mm, probably an hour, an hour and a half, okay? See you soon. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna actually use this as the ending for both videos, the dessert and the dinner. My glaze is being soaked up by this cake. Oh my gosh, it's so, I have tasted the glaze. It, it was everything I could do not to pour in a glass and drink it. It's so good. It is so good. Um, I'm not cutting into it yet because I want to have it for dessert tonight and I will show you guys Tonight's video. I'll maybe have a piece of cake while I'm talking to you guys. We'll see I don't do eat with me stuff, but I can show you the cake has it cut, but the glaze is just soaking up It's so pretty. It's so oh, I love it. I'm so happy with it. Oh Go to sunshine on my shoulder ASMR. You will love it trust me love them those videos now i'm going to bring you over here my lovelies and show you i've put the meatballs in the sauce look at that okay. and that parmesan rind is in there now i am going to probably be adding hmm, probably going to be adding some paste near the end in the last hour or so but we'll see because i want to see it's still got to cook for like three and a half hours, almost four hours. So I am leaving it off like that. That's what I mean by partially off. See, see here? No, you don't because I can't. There we go. So yeah, there we go. There's my tomato sauce and meatballs and our rum cake. And I hope you guys enjoyed my cook with me dessert and dinner. Oh, before this is done, just before re-season it, taste it first. I usually will salt, pepper, and maybe a little bit of fresh oregano if you have it, if not a little bit more dried and basil. That's it. And it'll be delicious. You can also add chili flakes too at the very beginning. Um, Uncle Angel's the only one that really likes it, so he puts them on his own plate. Okay, so that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. And as always, I love you. I value you. I honor you. And I'm so very, very glad that each and every one of you were born.